Have you ever thought of how to craft an answer for APM in order to impress the marketing team, telling the marketing team your script of answer deserves a pass? Hello, my name is Zikang Chan, the expert tutor for APM. This topic explainer, it's dealing with numerical questions versus narrative questions in APM. As you may know, the nature of these examinations shows and comprise three main questions, which are all compulsory. Each and every questions are likely to comprise and contain both numerical and narrative tasks, which embedded in each of the scenario that found in each respective exhibit. What are the common challenges? for the students in dealing with numerical questions before we take a look at best practices. First and foremost, students are largely not pretty sure what exactly are being asked. Second, not too sure where and how to start showing the answer for the numerical task. Then, not pretty sure how to present the workings on the calculations followed by spending too much of time in designing the flow of the work. Last but not least, even though we have got the skeleton of it, we have got no clue how to present and ensuring the working is of well structured. So the unstructured working is always one of the challenges faced by the students. How about the challenges dealing with narrative questions in APM? Well, first, it is the same weaknesses, the same challenges faced a while ago. Unsure how and what exactly is being asked in the task. Not able to understand the expectations on the verbs in use. Not too sure where and how to start planning for the written and the narrative answer. Spending too much of time in crafting, creating the content of the answer. Last but not least, have got no idea. Students are lacking of ideas on presenting a structured articulations form of the content. So guys, what's the solutions for that? These are the basic rules in order to help developing an effective answering techniques for both types of tasks. Firstly, spend quality time in reading through not only the requirements, more importantly, the exhibits to identify the embedded task, as well as reading through the storyline in the exhibit, identify and understand clues and backgrounds of the organizations. Then, think through how to blend the tasks and all the clues given in the exhibits together in forming the skeleton of the answer. Once you have an idea, a skeleton, how to put them up together, it's time for you to put down your thinking on the next step forward to plan about a more concrete layout of the answer. What exactly are the content? What exactly are the coverage that you are supposed to narrate and contain your workings in the calculations? Finally, deliver your answer in a marker-friendly manner. Always try to wear the head of the marker, asking yourself what are the markers expecting to see in your answer in order to award maximum possible credits to your work. Guys, here are some of the specific tips for you in dealing with numerical questions. Tip number one, always labor and link the work to the narrative answer. As you may know in APM, it is unlikely to have a task that is only asking and expecting a calculations to be done without asking to narrate and apply into some of the narrations required. So linking, labeling the piece of work in the calculations that show in the spreadsheet to the word processor response is of essential. Tip number two, copy and paste the appendix into the spreadsheet to facilitate the extractions of the figure into the calculations that are shown in your working, if that is appropriate. Tip number three, ensure steps of working have to be clearly shown. Do not cram all the calculations with a very tedious 
step of the processes into one line of the formula, break it up, showing the marker the step in a much clearer manner. Step number four, make a proper and a clear legend and abbreviations whenever in use. Do not leave the marker in the dark by just simply using the symbol without defining the meaning of it. Tip number five, always show the complete step of working even though not all the values are managed to found. In other words, let the marker know you have got a full answer plan to reach out to the final numbers, even though along the way, there could be some of the number that is not able to be found due to lacking of familiarity on the technical knowledge. Do not give up, guys. Always show to the end on the entire step of the working. Last but not least, let's not forget about taking advantage on the own figure rules that will be demonstrated a little bit further when we come to demonstration. How about the tips in dealing with narrative questions? Tip number one, ensure the content of the answers reflect the verbs in use as well as the professional skills required. So what exactly the students have to present when the question is asking with the verb evaluate, assessed, discuss, recommend, analyze, etc. Tip number two, ensure each of the point or findings are fully developed and come with a short and precise heading that is a preferred way of presenting a clear and precise written answer for a point of fully developed articulation. Third tip, one paragraph is ideally contain one key point of findings. So there is more than one point of finding to be developed, it will be highly encouraged that the students will break it into another separate paragraph. Tip number four, avoid using jargons. That is a very commonly found problems and weaknesses among the students by intending to impress the marker by using too many jargons, which is not encouraged. So guys, time to show some demonstration how exactly what I meant by all the tips that mentions on dealing with numerical and narrative questions. Here is the first question, which appear in one of the exam sitting on the case study that found in section A. So, this is not the part of the video that intending to show the development and productions of the full answer in detail. Instead, this video is merely to demonstrate the tips in demonstrating on dealing with both tasks of the questions by crafting the answer frame and the answer plan based on some of the information that I will take you through by going through some of the requirements and exhibit as well as appendix that found in the questions. Again, this is not intended to produce the full scale of the answer in this part of the video. So what I would normally do if I were put myself in the shoe of the students, it is to always pick up and understand what the requirement is all about. As a result, I would rather just quickly pick up all the requirements and copy that into the word processor at the beginning. So that will allow me to see things at one glance. So what I have to do is to spend a quick time to just quickly iron out and tidy up to break up all the tasks that we saw a moment ago in the requirement. As a result, that is how it will look like with just a couple of seconds spent. Knowing that most case study in APM will be asking for a report from the students. So the moment this is the requirements that found, before I start looking at the exhibit, I will immediately craft my answer with the format of the report. So just a rough demonstration to all, what I will do now is to turn the entire requirement quickly into a form of a report format in the following manner. Firstly, as you may know, this is a very typical format of the report. And what you may do is to extract 
the information that found in the requirement a while ago and fit it into wherever that is appropriate and possible. So who is this report addressing to? As they say, the report is addressing to the CEO of the organizations by the name Chan. So you can just pick up all these clues and form some of the content to get started off on your answer. And who are you? Well, you either will place the precisions of your own like performance management expert or management accountant at this moment as a default position, or you may want to wait until you read the exhibit to detect if there's any position assigned. Otherwise, I would suggest to put in as a default position, performance management expert. So bear in mind, write the full sentence in full. As the questions already highlighted the date, so it would be good to just take the date placed into the right placing. What's the title of the report? By reading through the exhibit, especially the first exhibit, it generally will give you a hint on the overall task required in the case. By default, the general heading on the reports for questions 1 in the APM are generally pertaining to performance management issues in the organizations of concern, which is Chen. So from there, that will allow me to have an easy start to form the rest of the part of the heading, such as the introduction and follow by the content of the answer, which I can therefore write onto the following listing of the requirement. My first heading of the answer is about performance reporting, followed by the next task pertaining to what gets measured gets done. Finally, brand survey. So, last but not least, if time permit, you may want to draw up and end your, re your report with a conclusion. So, that is how we craft the answer for the report writing questions once in APM. And the rest of the step, what you have to do is just to take a look at what is given in the exhibit. As you may know, the first exhibits of APM are usually telling you the generic background, the general information on the industry, as well as the internal environment, which is the organization. So what students usually can do, it's either turn on the first exhibit, read through all the detail, you may choose to highlight any important point that you detect from each and every paragraph, that is one of the ways. The second way that you may want to consider it's to take up the entire exhibit one, copy and paste it in your word processor at the beginning of it. But let's remember the purpose of doing this is for you to serve as the convenience of extracting some point from the above and put it down in your answer. So as a result, always remember to remind the marking team, do not mark the part that you copy and paste it into here. But at the same time, always remember to place the heading, answer, telling the marker that is where your content of answer for marking. So the part I copy, I will paste it over here. Well, spend shortest possible time, guys, to just quickly organize and rearrange back to the original layout. So as just a part of the simple demonstrations in this part of the video, I'm just going to quickly rearrange according to the spacing and the paragraph that we have seen in the original exhibit in this manner. So I can see the break the point and followed by the next break up. Then there will be another couple of paragraphs to go. Finally, it is about the strategy of the company. So this is what I do. And as a result, I can easily just get the first exhibit closer. So guys, what you have to do is to think about what are the key points that we found and pick it up from this long chunk of the exhibit. One of the tips for you to consider in applying is 
What students usually do not realize? The answer is, let me just get this close. It is some of the guidance on the right hand side of the master screen showing you what exactly is the highlights that found in every exhibit. The first exhibit is generally showing as what the questions already say, background, industry information, overall strategy of the company as general. So what I will do, I will pick this guy, copy, and I would like to paste it over here. The reason being, I may want to use this block of the guidance to break up the long paragraph that we picked from the first exhibit. So I may want to know which paragraph tells me about the background of the organization or as well as the industry. Then we have another breakup, which is purely on the industry information. So that allows me to know the background is mainly for the company, the internal environment. The second one is external environment, followed by overall strategy of the company. So these three main headings will help you to break the long paragraph into a much more clearly defined and separated clue that will allow you to improve the relevance and the effectiveness of connecting the clue and responding into your answer. So guys, again, this is not the purpose of the video in showing the full skill of answering uh, content of this question. As such, you may want to spend time to take a look at the content of each paragraph, put it into this three heading. Rest assured, this kind of outlook will improve the relevance and effectiveness of connecting the clue and forming your answer part. So what you have to do next, once you have got the clear pictures about the environment, you will then start turning on to the second exhibit, which is likely that the second exhibit will be connecting to each of the specific requirements that you saw a while ago. Take for instance, the first requirement that we saw, it's pertaining to performance reporting. And so happened, the title of the exhibit too, it's also on performance reporting. That will give you the hint that most of the crucial and direct clue, especially the task, will be found in this paragraph. And then you have to respond in part one of the content of this report. So what you have to do is to just glance through all the information, pick up the important facts. If you find there's a need for you to copy into the answer, I may suggest you to put it down under the above section. Do not mark. And you may want to just remind yourself, okay, I have some of the important clue that extracted from XCB2 performance reporting. You may just crop the whole of this requirement and including other information and put it here. Then you pick it from there. So that will ensure that you only focus on one screen at a time. That will give you a better concentration. Do you agree with it? So, to keep the time short, what I would like to draw your attention is to pick up the embedded task, which is clearly found in the last paragraph. The CEO has asked you to provide the following. So, I will take these up and as part of the good narrative skills of answering technique, I will paste my requirement into my first part of the heading. Then I will start breaking up into subtasks specifically. Firstly, I have to provide an assessment. So assessment on how well the report reflects the strategy of the company. That is the first main task that I will be demonstrating in my answer a while later. Then it has provided you with some of the illustrations on the most recent report that found in Appendix 1. So that will give you the hint that you have to refer to Appendix 1 in the moment. So when we are asked to assess how well the report reflects the strategy, naturally the students will think about what exactly are the good and the bads that are found in the report connecting to the strategy that's supposed to be reflected in that. This is one way that the students will usually think about how to craft the answer because of the word assessed or evaluate. However, if you spend some time to take a look at what it's given on the first paragraph, that would have given you additional hint and clue 
what exactly that you have to talk about regarding the reflections of the strategy from the report. Take for example, if you spend time to read through the first paragraph, you will notice there is a conversation between the board of directors as well as VC. By looking at the previous exhibits to understand a bit of a background, you should know what VC stands for. Venture capitalists. That is clearly a role of the equity investor. So there is a conversation between the board and the equity investors. And the equity investor seems not that happy on the report. Then you have to go on to see what exactly the external stakeholders are not happy with. And they say, according to the next sentence, VC indicated they felt the report was ineffective in achieving the principal purpose. So that gave you another hint, guys. So you have to go and pick up what exactly are the principal purposes of this company that is drawing the attention and interest of the VC. That is what made the VC not so happy with it. So by taking up those kind of key clues, now it blends into the requirement. Are you just going to assess how well the report reflects the strategy? Not really. You have to also address what exactly that the VC is not happy about. As such, you may want to consider take out these as one of the subtasks that will help you to, hey, I want to just keep a mind into what exactly this sentence is going to be responded with your answer that found later. So I'm going to just take this subtask out and I will place it here. So this is the concern raised by the VC. So obviously, you're not just going to assess how well the report would reflect the strategy, but you also need to indicate whether it will be true, as claimed by the VC, not effective in addressing and achieving the principal purpose. So you will therefore need to go back to the top of these copy and paste content, look out for what exactly are the purpose of the company, what exactly are the strategy of this company, and try to use this clue matching with the appendix ones, which is showing the most recent report. So guys, bear in mind, connecting the concern of the VC to the two matters that we have picked up is not totally the same as asking the student to comment on the performances of this company. So you are not supposed to draw your attention on something that is not required. As such, you may have to take a look at the design. You may have to look at what items of information and performances were reflected in this report and then start asking, are they well connected? Are they all well aligned with the strategy? Are they well aligned with the underlying purpose of the company? If the answer is yes, why yes? You may have to put down your finding in each of the relevant headings. If you say no, why no? I need an evidence. So you would therefore go on and start narrating your answer with a full articulation of a point of findings. That is what we call a fully developed point of findings. Guys, this is just one of the sample showing how exactly that you connect the information from the exhibit and appendix in, in crafting the answers for the written part itself. Spend some time, take a look at the rest of the requirement. You may want to give the same try to deal with the similar kind of task that is narrative in nature. Guys, here's another question that found in another exam setting of APM. And this time, the question is found in section B, questions three. So the purpose of this discussion and demonstration is to show and highlight some answering technique in dealing with numerical tasks of the questions. So, as usual, when I turn on to the requirement, I would like to just take down all the requirement and copy it, paste it into the word processor so that I would know what is there to respond in total. Once done, quickly Break it up, tidy up according to the original outlook of the requirement listing.
and that is how it looks right now. In this part of the video, some of the demonstrations will be shown not to part A and B in full, but mainly on part B, where there will be some of the tasks pertaining to numerical requirement. We are asked to respond to the CEO of ROT request for the work on the following area. On this part of the requirement, we are asked to do something on divisional performance. So what exactly that we have to perform? Let's take a look at some of the exhibits. As usual, turning on the first exhibit, that will give you some of the background. As we have demonstrated a while ago, how are you to structure and summarize and comprehend this information in a more structured bird eye view? And the answer is copy this, paste it into the word processor by using the headlines that found right over here. So you know that in the whole chunk of the exhibit one, it will touch on background and the structure of the organization. So you should therefore pick up these wording, just do like what you saw on the earlier part of the video and try to classify and group this long paragraph in exhibit one under the two heading. Rest assured, you will see a much clearer picture. But the purpose of this video is to show what exactly that I meant by dealing with numerical tasks of the question in Exhibit 3. So what we are being asked is by the CEO that required you to evaluate the three divisional performance using two of the divisional performance indicator, ROI and RI. So as usual, you are supposed to pick up the requirement that embedded in the exhibit Pays it and the word processor over here. So that is exactly showing what exactly are the tasks that we have to respond. Firstly, we are asked to evaluate the three performance in the three divisions using the two of the performance indicator. So as a result, you may have to work out the resulting answers for the two indicator of the three division. So what I would suggest the students to do is always to put a note or a working. So you may want to tell the marker, refer to the answer of the calculations in W1. So therefore, that is what you can do, refer to W1. From there, you may therefore start going into the spreadsheet and creating what exactly that you are to show in W1. That is how you labor and link the work clearly to the word processor. And then you may need to have some basic information, some raw data to facilitate the calculation. So by turning on to Appendix 1, you would see all the data are given in a spreadsheet format. So I would suggest the students, instead of turning on and leave the two tables or the window open up, you may consider copy the entire content, including the note, just copy, paste it in the spreadsheet. To make it much more convenient for you to refer to the number, especially if you click into any of the cell, it is already in numerical form, which allow you to relate this into the formula you create to form your calculation. So based upon this kind of copy and paste work, when you are to demonstrate the calculation of ROI or the RI, which is already clearly defined in the questions, you are therefore allowed to use the abbreviations freely for the three division. So if you take a look at the three of the column, even the name of the division is given clearly, office, industrial, and disposal. You may therefore carry on your calculations just right underneath the same column. So you will be able to at the end work out the answer of both the ROI as well as the RI by showing the result in this manner. And this number will then be extracted and typed out under the words file for your comments for your references purpose. So that is where you will start putting in your answer for office, industrial, disposal. 
and that is how it allowed you to facilitate your commentary, your evaluations as such. And this will make sure your answer that you present is of marker friendly. Everything is well labeled. So from there, you will carry on to your evaluation. Guys, I hope the demonstrations of these two questions, one narrative and the other numerical, would have given you a better clue in making use of the skills that have demonstrated a while ago. So finally, all the best in your upcoming examination.